not too bad in 76 with the dual quads. Not too bad. Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're out in the western suburbs of Chicago, right out in my own hometown, right next to my hometown. I saw Larry at a car show. Larry, what's your last name? Uh, it's Simolis. And what's the year, make, and model of this car? It's a 1976 Oldsmobile Cutlass 442. And how long have you had this one? I bought it brand new in 1976. <laughs> the original owner yes, I of am. this car. Come right alongside me, Larry, and let's feature the car that you've had since new. Now the first question is, why did you have this car? What did you have before and why did you need this one? How'd that all work out? I had a 1973 American Motors Hornet, six cylinder <laughs> automatic. And uh, so every three years I would be looking for a new car and there was nothing out there that I liked until I saw this in a magazine article. And I said, I just love the way that car looks. It looks fast standing still. Well, I'll tell you, the colonnade body style, let's step back from it and take it in, um, really does look quite wonderful. Well, what I liked about the car, too, is the slanted nose. So the bumpers don't look like they're actually hanging on there as an afterthought. So that's just the overall, you know, profile of the car just got me interested in it. You know, that was a, that must have been a huge design challenge for the people who were designing the car because that was, it was huge in the safety features mm -hmm. and we were crushing the cars with emissions at that time. Yeah. So I know there was nothing there and you were sharing that you originally wanted a big block in this car. Correct. Which was the 455, which was still surprisingly an option on this car. And we're going to show, come on back. But what happened? How come the, the the 455 didn't show up? It just never came. It just never came. I think they only built uh, 400 and something 455s, and that was it. Most of them were coming out of the factory with uh, 350 motors, which is what this has. And let's take a look at our trunk and treats. So here's our trunk and treats, and let's start with the Cutlass S Colonnade Hardtop Coupe with the 442 option. So there you see the 442 appearance package, and it's $134. And Larry, that's not too bad. I mean, uh, no, back then. Yeah, that seems pretty affordable. Now, granted, I know it's mostly a sticker package. There's Larry's original title, and here you can see some of the '76 exterior colors, which is great. Your car is obviously just black, black. as we see there. There's. There's no special word or name for it. Other than that, the 76 Oldsmobile spec book, salesman prices and equipment. I won't go all the way through that, but you get the flavor, the models, the prices. That shows you all the stuff you can get on the car, all the code numbers. Right, all the stuff you need. Do me a favor, pull up the 76 442 or the Cutlass S Colonnade, if you will. Here's your the vehicle stopping distance information. I'm being very careful with all of this. Your Motor Insurance Corporation, your warranty, your maintenance schedule. Notice the 76 with the stars and stripes for the owner's manual because in 1976, well, that was our country's bicentennial and everything was red, white, and blue in that year. And I won't go all the way through all this, but you get the idea of all of the cool owner's manual features. Who's this guy here? That's me when I bought the car. <laughs> As you notice, it's white on the bottom because that was somebody else's car because my big block never came in. Is that right? So that was somebody else's car, but a right. picture of you. Tell me what this is. That's a CD of the uh, body and service manuals. I've always bought those when I bought a new car. I okay. actually still have the books. How cool is that? But that just simplifies it. So that way, even when a mechanic works on this car, you know, he, if he doesn't realize how to get something apart, he looks at that and says, oh, Let me have you open done. that for just a second. I want to see the sure. cover of that. Okay, here's the, the Cutlass S model. Let me see that. Oh, that's cool, right? Try to find those. 
Well, thanks for saving that, Larry. Yeah. There's your powertrain. There was a 455 option. Yeah, the last year of the big blocks. Wow, I did and not know that. Yeah, I ordered this car in August of 75, and my big block never came in. Is that right? So that's why I took this car here, and now I just had it painted six years ago and put the silver on the bottom like I wanted. And there's your 442 option, and we'll just take a look at the Cutlass, the Omega, and the Starfire. What well, seems like the uh, the colonnade body just um, you don't see them anymore. Yeah. How how many do you see at car shows? Uh, I only know two other guys that, he, and one of them is actually another original owner, and he just drools over my car. And is his a regular Cutlass, or is his a four four two? No, four four two. His is also a four four two. He has original paint on his, of course, but it's all cracked. Yeah. I couldn't drive my car like that. Driving is more from point A to B. Yeah. Feel the excitement. But there are a few out there. But very rarely when I go to a car show do I see another 442 76 or a 77. That is great. The Starfire, the Cutlass Supreme Cruiser. dirt biking. Usually the pictures are always great in these magazines. There's your base Starfire with the dog dishes and then the Starfire GT. Boy, I have not seen one of those. <laughs> I know. A Starfire GT. I'll have to put that on the on the wish list. All it was was a Chevy Monza in disguise. Yeah. Or a Vega, basically. Chevy Monza in disguise. There we go. Yeah. The Omega was holding back from me. And that was a Chevy Nova in disguise. Yep. And then there's your colors and your cars in 1976. Some of the wheel packages. Or lift off hatch roof, as they call it. And that's our trunk and treats. And we're back. So, as you could see, the 442 option was actually not that costly. And the back of this car really has a nice stance. It has a very streamlined look. And you're right, they, they didn't do a bad job with the bumpers. Large back glass. Thin pillars, lots of availability, and as you come into the Oldsmobile, you can see that very neat swivel seat, which is super cool that they took that bucket and did that. Now I don't know how many other cars they did that with. Was it the? Uh, how many cars do you think they did this with? They did they do. Oh, that some, I don't know. I think I don't. Was think it any Pontiacs any or? Because well, you could you could get the standard bucket seats, and I just didn't like them because they didn't hold you in place. So when I tried these out on a test drive, I says, yeah, they kind of hold you in place a little bit better. Yeah, you can see actually as we get closer, you can see there's some nice bolsters in here that, to right. your point, really hug you well. Right. And that's all from the factory. Larry, how many original miles do you have on this one? Uh, it's going on 87,000. About 20 of those were put on in the first couple of years. And then after that, uh, <laughs> store it in the wintertime. So the gauges are all correct here where they give you three gauges in one pod and the Right. And the speedometer in the other. We've got our wood grain there and our nice pieces here. And what's this up top? That's uh, fasten your seat belt. Fasten your seat belt. When you start the car, it pops on real quick and turns itself back off. Got it. Government mandated. Yeah. Government mandated. You've Not obviously, obviously a little update to the radio. Yes. And you're a Vietnam veteran, as I can see. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. And this great console in this car as well. Let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Let me do one other thing on the door I saw. The all-important tag explaining what we have. 
Now, are these rally wheels that they call them, or? Uh, super stocks. Super stocks. Super stock threes. You know, it's just so rare to find, you know, the colonnade body style. You just don't seem to have it. Oh, nice little chrome on the uh, pieces here. Yeah, a little bit. Now, what, what, uh, I see, uh, uh, the Oldsmobile, was that from the factory chrome, or did you do that Oh, yourself? no, 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 that's, uh, that's all aftermarket stuff. All aftermarket, yeah, okay. Edelbrock valve covers, and then I picked that up on eBay from some guy that had that cover. That was nice Got to have it. <laughs> even even the wing nuts, you know, for the air cleaner too, it's got the Oldsmobile rocket symbol on it. Just little stuff. <laughs> little touches. Yeah, well, even this here, I've added that on. You know, it didn't come with that. And that was all black originally. Yeah. But I said, that's a nice little But it still has all the flavor of the original car. Right. And the wipers hide behind the hood. So, well, somewhat. <laughs> somewhat. Let's, uh, let's start it up, shall we? Okay. And we'll listen to the exhaust. We'll let it idle. With, um, as you come on out, I just want to share some of those chrome bits again. Uh, first of all, I noticed dual exhaust. Now, this is something interesting, which, of course, a 442 was, what, four-barrel? Originally, it was a uh, uh, four-barrel, uh, four-speed dual exhaust. And on yours, it was actually single exhaust. Single exhaust with a 350 and an automatic. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the 442 is clearly a sticker package, but you put the right. dual exhaust on there. Exactly, yeah. When I had the motor done, uh, oh, about ten years ago. So put a mild cam into it and all that, which you can kind of hear, you know, the exhaust system was replaced and, uh, and did the true duels. And let's, uh, let's take it for a ride. Okay. So Larry and I are in the 76 Cutlass 442 taking a ride. How's it feel? Great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels perfect. Yeah. Uh, I want to just show people, we're making a left right here, but we're kind of out the country taking a ride in the car. And I'll tell you, for a 76 car, it's just as comfortable as anything today. Well, I love these bucket seats. Yeah, the bucket seats are perfect, and it's absolutely a, a delightful ride. I mean, you can see how how smooth it is. I'm just going to give people a chance to look at the, what we're seeing. It's a little choppier than when it was new because I've got uh, polygraphite bushings all throughout. So when you take this to car shows, what's the reaction? People just stare at it. <laughs> and they say, wow. They, because it's, it's so different. You know, everybody's got their standard of fare, you know, with the Mustangs, the Camaros, the GTOs, and this thing rolls in. How's that make you feel? Oh, great. <laughs> I mean, that's what I love about car shows. Not trophies anymore. I just like the, you know, people that ask me about my car. The reaction. Or, or like a few weeks ago, I was at a car show and I'm leaving the show and a bunch of spectators says, oh man, that thing's got a cam in it. You know, it's wild. Yeah. You know. Well, it's just a great car and it's lots of fun. And we've got such a great view that we're viewing today. So I hope everybody enjoys this ride, the 442. Larry, great car. Thanks so much for being on the channel. Thanks for being in my car store. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you.